The place rocked, but not everyone welcomed the collaboration. Beyonce did not belong there, even looked out of place. Keep country, country, went one tweet. I literally cringe when Beyonce sang with the Dixie Chicks, goes another. As an upsetting experience to many, including Alan Jackson. During the Dixie Chicks and Beyonce's collaboration performance, Alan Jackson had reportedly walked out. It does not... Real quick, what'd you think? I hated it. I, I, th I thought it was one of the best uh, award shows that I've seen in a long time. And then Beyonce comes out, uh, and I'm thinking, oh, all right, uh, this, this should be interesting. I love Beyonce. But then she comes out with the Dixie Chicks, who have separated themselves from country music 10 years ago. And uh, and then Beyonce did a self-serving song. I, I didn't see what it added to the show. I thought I thought it was just ridiculous. I was so much looking forward to Beyonce's performance. I thought maybe she's going to do a, a cover of uh, you know a famous song from, from years ago. No, she does... Daddy Lessons from her own album? Forget it. I hated it. Ambition. For musicians, ambition can materialize in various ways, and that ambition can lead an artist from humble beginnings to royalty. Now, I don't know how long you've been on this rock floating in space called Earth, but we've seen many artists create and leave a permanent mark on the world. From the Beatles to Michael Jackson, from David Bowie to Kate Bush, these artists all set out to define what music is and what music means to them. Their sound transcends genres and generations. And we have Beyonce, who's been around since the 90s, constantly changing and reinventing herself, releasing bodies of work, defining what music means to her, and making her mark. To her core, ambition is what drives her. It's ambition what kept her going to this day, fueling her strides with each project. And as we draw near to a conclusion, another desire that has been there since day one, ruminating, cultivating its roots, has finally blossomed with ease and poise. Violence. Just like anger, violence isn't always necessary. However, when used strategically, it will get the job done. More than that, it can be a constant reminder, and in Beyonce's case, it made one hell of an album. Beyonce is not your typical artist. Born in Houston, Texas to father Matthew Knowles, who's African American, Matthew was a sales manager for Xerox, and born to mother Celestine Ann Beyonce, better known as Tina Knowles. Tina is Louisiana Creole and a hairdresser and salon owner. At age 7, Beyonce entered talent shows and beat out her competition that was much older than her. At age 8, Beyonce auditioned and was placed in a group called Girls Time. That's where she met former Destiny's Child member Latavia Robertson, one of the original members. Girls Time toured their native Houston before appearing on Star Search in 1993, one of the biggest TV talent shows at the time. Unfortunately, Girls Time did not take home the win. I was only nine years old, so at that time you don't realize that you could actually work super hard and give everything you have and lose it was the best message for me after a shakeup with management of girls time beyonce's father matthew knowles resigned from his stable paying job to manage the group he enrolled them in boot camp where the girls endured challenging vocal and dancing lessons and they changed their name to destiny's child matthew also cut the original lineup to four members after that the group continued performing as an opening act for other established R&B groups, and Tina would design their stage costumes. On the road to success, Destiny's Child auditioned for a few labels before signing to Elektra Records, but those deals ended up falling through before finally signing to Columbia Records. If there is anything we can all learn from Beyonce's story is having ambition and drive can really take you to where you want to be. Yes, she was fortunate having parents who believed and stood by her in her struggle days, but it's Beyonce's ambition and work ethic that also drove them to continue supporting her. If it was just her parents driving force, we probably wouldn't know who Beyonce is today, and Matthew Knowles and Tina would probably be the big stars. Who knows?
An artist like Beyonce wants to be remembered. They want to be cemented in history, not just music history. They strive to be one of the greatest, like the Beatles and the Rolling Stones. They want to make moves like Mick Jagger, Madonna, and Prince. And we see this in the moves Beyonce makes, being in movies, and going on elaborate world tours. I told my team I want to shoot a video for every song and put them all out at the same time. Everyone thought I was crazy. When Beyonce makes an album, it's a blockbuster. It's not just her and a producer, it's multiple producers. Multiple writers in writer's camps in mansions in Manhattan. And I know, some people might not like it when a lot of writers are in one song, but what of it? Not every artist prides themselves on being the only writer. For artists like Beyonce, it's about the vision. So if I can get all the greatest writers in one setting and we all collaborate and bounce ideas off of each other to get the best result of what I want, then I'm going to do it. That's the mindset of someone driven by their ambition. And that might be egotistical and kind of self-absorbed, but when your ambitions leads you to be one of the greats, that's honestly a given and rightfully so. Because at that point, you're not thinking like your regular person. When you get a huge budget like Beyonce, you use it without fear. In 2016, Beyonce dropped Lemonade, her sixth studio album. And on that album, featured a country track called Daddy Lessons. her first entry into the country music genre. Beyonce performed the song alongside the Dixie Chicks at the 50th Annual Country Music Association Awards, Country Music's Biggest Night. And to say people hated the collaborative performance is an understatement. Beyonce was not welcomed at all because she's primarily an R&B slash pop artist and because she's black. The CMAs also got backlash, so much so they pulled the promotional social media posts, which many saw as the organization bending to some of their racist and gatekeeper audience. You see, in 2016, Beyonce was very vocal about BLM and police brutality, which also sparked conversation of that being the main reason why some country fans didn't like the performance, although country music is pioneered by black people. I have a theory on this whole matter. I think if Beyonce had came out singing a country classic with a more white-leaning aesthetic or catered more to the gatekeepers of country, she probably wouldn't have gotten so much backlash or no backlash at all because she would be catering towards the oppressors but Beyonce came out, did her own music filled with funk vibes, soul, and gospel. And that's the thing with black country. It's that black influence, that black power that make you want to break it down and get funky. The gatekeepers don't like that. Quite frankly, they didn't like the black seasonings sprinkled all throughout the performance. To have ambition, you have to be fearless. Beyonce's entry into country music in 2016 was her way of saying that she can do whatever she wants, and the backlash she got lit a fire inside of her. It caused a declaration of war. Genres are a funny little concept, aren't they? Texas Hold'em and 16 Carriages, two country tracks, were released in February 2024. 16 Carriages, a country ballad, tells a story about the singer's life and the work she's put into her career and sacrifices she made for her legacy and how it all made her grow up quick. For a legacy, if it's the last thing I do, you remember me because we got something to prove. In your memory, on the highway to truth, still see our faces when you close your eyes. Texas Hold'em is an upbeat country bop. It's all about having a good time and the spirit of Texas. And even during hard times, there is always time to hold down. The track Ignite discussions of black musicians placed within country music, boosted the listenership of black country artists and country radio in general, and increased the popularity of western wear and western culture. A country radio station caused controversy after rejecting a request to play Texas Hold'em, starting a wider debate on black musicians' place within country music, despite the influence of African Americans in its origins. The track was sent to US pop radio, Hot AC, Rhythmic Urban AC, 
and country radio stations. But in its first 24 hours of release, only 8 out of 150 radio stations considered for country played the song. I want to take the time to talk about Lil Nas X for a bit. He released his hit Old Town Road, a country trap song in late 2018. The track went number one on the Billboard Hot 100 and on the country songs chart. However, Billboard later removed the track from the country charts because it supposedly didn't have enough country elements, which is absolute BS in my opinion. Despite the hate, Texas Hold'em roared onto the Billboard Hot 100 at number 2 in its debut and quickly rose to number 1, becoming Beyonce's ninth solo number 1 on the chart. Additionally, the track debuted atop the Hot Country Songs chart, making Beyonce the first black woman with a number 1 country song in Billboard history. Around 100 songs were recorded for Cowboy Carter, the singer's 8th studio album. Each song on the project has themes from western movies including Urban Cowboy, Velma and Louise, Space Cowboy, The Hateful Eight, just to name a few. Cowboy Carter opens with an explosive and spiritual opener, American Requiem. In a religious context, Requiem is another name for Mass, a service held for the dead. It's as if Beyonce is talking to the gatekeepers of country music, who are old. They don't want country music to change, they want it to stay the same. On the other hand, we have Beyonce, who wants them to see country differently. Country doesn't have to be one way, in order for the genre to live and not die with the gatekeepers. And these are the same gatekeepers who have buried a lot of the history and the true origins of country. In American Requiem, Beyonce also called out her critic's hypocrisy. And in the close of her prayer, she assures she will reclaim what is hers. Out with the old and in with the new, Beyonce chose a lot of violence on this project. I choose violence. Jolene, originally done by Dolly Parton, Beyonce's character is willing to fight for her man and warns her antagonist Jolene that the 25-year bond between her and her significant other cannot be ruined by an old floozy like her. On Jolene, Beyonce's version, the protagonist warns Jolene Joestar that just because she is a queen doesn't mean she cannot get down and dirty, as she's a Creole banshee bitch from Louisiana and she will tap dance on that ass. Acts of Violence was carried into the 11th track, Daughter. Similar to Jolene, Beyonce's character shows restraints as infidelity knocks on her door. However, in Daughter, she prays to God for guidance due to the tantalizing violent fantasies that plagues her, while at the same time being confronted by how much like her father she actually is. Daughter is storytelling at its best as you are transported to a crime scene in the character's head. Your body laid out on these filthy floors Your blood stains on my custom couture Daughter features Beyonce singing an Italian opera song called Caro Mio Ben. It was included because it narrates about the loneliness felt by the absence of his loved ones and the cruelty he inflicts on her. Now, there aren't just acts of violence on Cowboy Carter, sadly. Alligator Tears is one of the best songs on the project. It's about really being madly in love, to the point of being manipulated, only that you know you are being manipulated and you don't care. Thinking about leaving, hell no. Squeeze every ounce of love from my body. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, baby. Yeah. The track has a misty and sinister tone that reminds me of the Eagles, Hotel California, or something off of Fleetwood Mac's Rumors Project. Two Most Wanted featuring Miley Cyrus is one of the most unexpected collaborations on the album. 
and it's crazy how they complement each other so well. I would have never put them together and just thinking about them actually doing a song together just never crossed my mind. But thank god they gave us this collaboration. A collaboration we didn't know we needed. The track is obviously a nod to the album's movie theme, Thelma and Louise. A film about two friends, Thelma and Louise. They had regular lives and then ended up being criminals on the run. All of the songs on the album slaps, I'm not gonna lie. And it's hard to name the best as they all are so good. But some of my faves are Bodyguard, Tyrant, Protector, Yaya, and Two Hands in Heaven. This album is a masterpiece and an instant classic. But to be honest, I was not expecting this album to be this good. Seeing it was 27 tracks and with a duration of an hour and 19 minutes, but it seems much shorter because of how fun the album is and how much fun I was having listening to this album. The album reminds me of The Weeknd's Don FM, how it tells story through a radio format in its interludes, and a little bit of Billie Eilish's EP Don't Smile At Me and her debut album When We All Fall Asleep Where Do We Go. On those projects, Billie made a cohesive mashup of all the songs on the last track to tell a different story, while in Cowboy Carter, what they did similar was with the 26th track, they made a medley with three different songs. Sweet, Honey, Buckin', with Shibuzi. And this was the only song that I had an issue with first, because it felt like the album was ending in a bad way, but then I realized it's because it's because I didn't want it to be over. It's like leaving a party while the party is also wrapping up but they're playing all the lit songs. The last part, Buckin' Yo. You can tell they were just having fun with this medley. Beyonce's Cowboy Carter impact was attributed to an increase in sales for other black country artists. Google searches for cowboy hat and cowboy boots surged following the announcement of the album. Levi's Jeans, the 17th track featuring Post Malone, caused a 20% boost in stock for the clothing company Levi's. The company would also add a second letter I to its name and logo on Instagram to match the spelling of the track. Cowboy Carter debuted at number one on the Billboard 200 chart with 107,000 units in its first week, making Beyonce the first black woman to debut her first eight studio albums at number one. Beyonce is an artist that is fueled by her ambitions, and with Cowboy Carter, she has yet again changed whatever preconceptions about her and conversations about whatever genre she should or shouldn't do has been laid to rest. She has finally earned her stripes, and she did it by force in a male-dominated industry, taking country from these old heads and calling her country album a Beyonce album to further rub it in. Beyonce basically said, this genre is mine, and I'm going to open the floodgates for all. Cowboy Carter will go down in history as one of the most important albums of all time, born in an act of defiance, out of one artist's ambition to be a genre-bending legend. And Beyonce. We're still waiting on the visuals. 